Christian actually has gone to the point of officially accepting evolution and claiming that it fits into Genesis 1. So going along is easier than arguing with. We could talk about the negative things, you know, no man has gone to heaven except Jesus, of course, that's John 3.13. But that's not my intent this morning is to go that route. But rather, like we said in our joint prayer, the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come. You know, people say that a lot, but I wonder how many people really think of that. Are, are we asking for thy kingdom to come? Come where? Come from where is the question, right? <clears throat> Acts 3, verses 18 uh, through 22. Of course, we have to always have this. We're going to try to have some verses out of the Old Testament and the New Testament. Acts 3, 18. But those things which God before hath showed by the mouth of of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. Yeah, you find Christ where? In the scriptures, by the prophets in the Old Testament, that he was going to suffer for us and die. Verse 19, because of that, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So where is the Lord now? In heaven. But there's a time when those, that time, the time of refreshing, comes from the presence of the Lord. <clears throat> so he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. Again, God and Jesus both are not here now, but they will be, verse 21, whom the heaven must receive until, you know, we read these verses often, right? But this word until is kind of a key word here. Whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things. What does until mean? That means it's going to change. Something else is going to happen then which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Restored to what? Well, to something that was before, right? That's what restoration means. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. So a Moses-like person, him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Well, that was true of Moses, wasn't it? You know, I, nobody wants to say that about Jesus. Moses was dealing with his people, God's people, the Jews, and not all of them survived. In fact, a great number did not. And it's going to be similar with the prophet like Moses. Not going to survive if you don't listen to what he says. He is God's representative. <clears throat> Revelation 2 7. Revelation 2 7, which says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Restoration. We don't have that tree now. We don't appear to have the paradise of God now. I don't know of anybody that even thinks that. But here is a verse that says that's going to happen. Okay, let's get into the Old Testament a little bit. Isaiah 35. Remember, this is kind of detail-oriented, so try to uh, glean pieces of information that tell you where the kingdom is and the concept that it's not any place other than here. And by that, I guess what I'm trying to get at is that people figureize as much as they can to explain going to heaven, and these are heaven-like concepts. But 
the verses we're going to read have geographical and actual information that try to imagine figurizing these, if you would. Isaiah 35, 1. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as a rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. Now, there's some figurative language there, isn't there? Wildernesses don't rejoice with singing and joy. But is the place figurative? The glory of not heaven, but Lebanon shall be given unto it, the excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. These places are going to see that. Strengthen the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Think of Israel and Moses and that stuff, right? There was obedience required. I really enjoyed this morning's lesson. God doesn't want the sacrifices. That's a great thought. He wants obedience. He wanted people to get the inheritance that Moses was taking them to. <clears throat> and he wants us to get the inheritance too. Even God with a recompense. And we read in Acts, there is a restitution and a recompense, isn't there? He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. If we're just a spirit figure in some heavenly place, why do your eyes need to be open? Why do you need eyes? I mean, our soul understands all that. That was sarcasm. I apologize. But the reality is all of this stuff works through the input of our senses, doesn't it? Then shall the lame man leap as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. I can enjoy some of that. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in the desert, and the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty lands springs of water. In the habitation of dragons where each lathe shall be grass and reeds and rushes. Do you see how many physical things there are here? physical beings, physical things, and locations, <clears throat> and improvements. And an highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. They're going to be careful. So there's going to be people that could be fools in this paradise? Yeah, it's not heaven, is it? No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransom to the Lord shall return and shall come to Zion. That's a place, isn't it? With songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Praise the Lord. Man, I look forward to that. And it's clear where it is, isn't it? <clears throat> Another one, Psalm 72, starting at the first verse. Psalm 72, 1. A psalm for Solomon. Give the king thy judgments, O God and thy righteousness unto the king's son. He shall judge thy people with righteousness and thy poor with judgment. The mountains shall bring peace to the people and the little hills by righteousness. Mountains. Hmm. He shall judge the poor of the people. He shall save the children of the needy. We try to do that. I don't know if we always try hard enough, but we do make an effort, don't we? And it's a tough job. We can't do anything more than help a little, and we should do that. But God will save the children of the needy and shall break in pieces the oppressor. We have to be careful that we don't desire to do that. That's not our job. But God will take care of that. 
I have faith in that. <clears throat> they shall fear thee as long as the sun and moon endure throughout all generations. He shall come down like rain upon the mown grass as showers that water the earth. In his days shall the righteous flourish and abundance of peace so long as the moon endureth. Uh, there, there's science fiction about the moon not enduring, but you know what? I don't see it going any place soon, going away any time soon. And he shall have dominion also from sea to sea and from the river unto the ends of the earth. From sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. There's no place like that in heaven that I'm aware of. That's got to be here, doesn't it? They that dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him, and his enemies shall lick the dust. Again, not our doing, but it will be done. The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall bring presents. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall offer gifts. Yea, all kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall serve him. Is there any possible way to make this sound like anything other than earth? <clears throat> so specific, so much geography. For he shall deliver the needy when he crieth, the poor also, and him that hath no helper. That's, that's awesome. He shall spare the poor and needy. He shall save the souls of the needy. He shall redeem their soul from deceit and violence, and precious shall their blood be in his sight. Remember what a soul is here. Breath plus dust of the earth. God's breath. This is a complete being. This is not some separate part of us. If it were, then that would help us to understand going to heaven, wouldn't it? But what we're reading here is there's nothing going on for us in heaven. In fact, the physicality of where it's going to be is very real, and the souls are dealing in that physio physicality, in that geography. <clears throat> and he shall live, and to him shall be given the gold of Sheba. Gold, what value is gold in heaven? Prayer also shall be made for him continually, and daily shall he be praised. There shall be an handful of corn in the earth upon the tops of the mountains. I can remember when I first read this verse, I was pretty impressed. The fruit thereof shall shake like Lebanon. The tops of the mountains are where the least production is, and it's going to have a serious amount of growth there. <laughs> and they of the city shall flourish like the grass of the earth. His name shall endure forever. His name shall be continued as long as the sun. And men shall be blessed in him. All nations shall call him blessed. I don't think nations are in heaven, are they? <clears throat> blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who only doeth wondrous things. Some internet memes want to put upon God the concept that he is a very self-centered and almost evil person. But without him, not only would we not exist, but there would be no good things, right? It is wondrous things. It's wondrous that we are alive, that we exist, and that we have a hope of a much better thing. Very glorious and wondrous. God is merciful. God is great. Not selfish or evil in the sense that the world wants to portray him as because they want God to be something like they are. But he's not. He did this for our good and because he wants family. <clears throat> it's very glorious. And blessed be his glorious name forever, and let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen and amen. <clears throat> okay, Isaiah 61. Isaiah is full of this stuff. Isaiah 61, 11. I didn't give the verse, sorry about that. 
We could read a lot more here, right? Let's just read this one verse. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. We can look around. Has this happened yet? Is, are things getting better morally wise and God wise? I don't think there's anybody that thinks that. Now that I can't tell you what other people think, but there's always an underlying people, group of people who comment, including those who like the evil that's coming, that recognize there is a morality. They say it's wrong, but there is a morality, and they recognize that society is suffering because of the lack of that morality. But they're still going that direction. <clears throat> but righteousness and praise will spring forth before all nations. Let's go back 10 chapters. Isaiah 51 and verse 3. Isaiah 51, 3. For the Lord shall comfort Zion. Has that happened yet? He will comfort all her waste places. It certainly hasn't happened like that. Although, you know what, Israel has done a pretty good job. So much so that the people that weren't taking care of it now think they want it back. And he will make her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein. Thanksgiving and the voice of melody. <laughs> I don't know if I've said this before or not, but it wasn't too long ago that you know, my wife and I have often commented about how cool it'll be to listen to the chorus of angels singing. And, and all of a sudden, it was her thought. Imagine a, the word has escaped me, a, a, um, when you go to hear a singing group, a uh, concert, imagine a concert with God singing. <laughs> that, that, that struck me, wow. I mean, I'd thought of the angels, but I hadn't thought about God singing. Okay, then. Remember what happened to the mountain when God just spoke? It sh shook and trembled, and everybody thought they were going to die. But this is going to be the other side of that, isn't it? This is going to be glorious. This is going to be the most glorious singing there could be. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Ezekiel 36. Ezekiel 36, verse 33. Ezekiel 36, 33. Remember, we started in the New Testament. And the New Testament refers to the scriptures. And that's the Old Testament. A lot of people try to separate them, but they are inseparable. They tell the same story. Ezekiel 36, 33. Thus saith the Lord God, in the day that I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities, I will also cause you to dwell in the cities, and the wastes shall be builded. And the desolate land shall be tilled, whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that passed by. And they shall say, this land that was desolate is become like the Garden of Eden. Wow. And the waste and desolate and ruined cities are become fenced and are inhabited. Some want to say this is now, but no, I don't think so. <clears throat> Verse 36, then the heathen that are left round about you shall know that I, the Lord, build the ruined places and plant that that was desolate. Okay, that's why it's not now. Because the heathen shall know that the Lord did this. Do any of Israel's neighbors think that the Jehovah God is really there? Well, not that they will admit. In other words, this, this is obviously an admission here. It's not going on now, not even close. In fact, it's constant war, isn't it? If you blink, there'll be another missile going over the border or stones thrown and every, everything in between. Isaiah 2, 
Second verse, Isaiah 2. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, come ye, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. That leaves out some religions that claim Abraham, but not Jacob, right? And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, out of Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. How much more plain can you get than that? And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. And this is one that I've always loved. So simple, nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. That's not happened. And I don't care how old any of us are here, we have never seen anything even close to this. Not even close. 19th chapter of Isaiah. See how much stuff there is? Every single one of these verses has clear future references to the land and the people on it. Isaiah 19, 18, which says, In that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak the language of Canaan. Not happening now. And swear to the Lord of hosts, one shall be called the city of destruction. In that day shall there be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt. That would be abomination times a hundred right now, wouldn't it? And at any time in the past, other than some history we may, might not know of when Joseph was there and some similar times, who knows. And a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord. <clears throat> and it shall be a sign and a witness for the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. This is, this is so foreign to what we know now. For they shall cry unto the Lord because of the oppressors, and he shall send them a Savior and a great one, and he shall deliver them. And the Lord shall be known to Egypt, and the Egyptians shall know the Lord in that day, and shall do sacrifice and oblation. Yea, they shall vow a vow unto the Lord and perform it. I was well into the faith a few years before I ever even heard this verse. But this is just awesome stuff. The other nations are not just going to recognize Jehovah, but they're going to be worshiping him. And let's keep reading. And the Lord shall be known in Egypt, and the Egyptians shall know the Lord in that day, and they shall do sacrifice and oblation. Yea, they shall vow a vow unto the Lord and perform it. And the Lord shall smite Egypt. Oops. He shall smite and heal it. And they shall return even to the Lord, and he shall be entreated of them and shall heal them. Okay, obviously God wants children, he wants those who choose him, and it's a problem no matter who you are, Jew, Gentile, anything else. If you don't choose to be part of God's family, guess what? You won't be. Pretty simple, isn't it? In that day there shall be a highway out of Egypt to Assyria. And the Assyrian shall come into Egypt, and the Egyptian into Assyria, and the Egyptians shall serve with the Assyrians. North of Israel, south of Israel. There's going to be a highway there that they're going to travel, and they're going to be serving together. In that day shall Israel be the third with Egypt and with Assyria, even a blessing in the midst of the land. So Israel's the blessing whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people, and Assyria, the work of my hands, and Israel, mine inheritance. Read peace between the neighbors of Israel and Israel. Yeah. More in Isaiah, chapter 65, 17. 
Isaiah 65, 17. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. Not new heavens and an earth. And, and, and that's where you're going to go, to that heaven. But a new heavens and a new earth. Are they all going to be changed? Well, let's see what happens here. And the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. Some people like to say that we won't remember anything. But my thought on this is, what do you remember from when you were three or four or five years old? We might have some memories of that time, but what value were those memories? What were your values when you were four and five? It doesn't come into mind because it's no longer important. It was important when you were that age, but now we're, we've moved on. We're on to adult things or older things, whatever we are, right? It's not that you can't remember them, but they're not going to come to mind. There's no need. Verse 65 seems to indicate that is right. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. There shall be no more thence in infinite days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. For the child shall die in a hundred years old, but the sinner being in a hundred years old shall be accursed. There will be death, but it looks like it's going to be a lot longer life, doesn't it? We know from understanding of Revelation and other places that this is the first part of the kingdom on earth. This is the thousand year reign of Christ according to Revelation 20 and 21. And they shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people. How long does a tree live? <laughs> I, I don't really know the answer to that. I understand some make thousands of years. <clears throat> okay. But hundreds anyway. And mine elect shall enjoy, excuse me, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. We enjoy the work of, that God has given us now and life. But it looks like it's going to be better then. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble. For they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. How many of us have prayed and would like an answer? It's going to be better. It's going to be better. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the la lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and dust shall be the serpent's meat. That doesn't change, does it? And they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountains, saith the Lord. <clears throat> Psalm 16 and verse 8. Psalm 16, 8. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Do we make that our thought every morning we get up? God is my right hand man. I'm going to make sure that he approves of what I do today. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also so shall rest in hope. For thou wilt not Leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Prophecy about Jesus there, isn't it? And there's a sense because we get baptized into Jesus that it applies, doesn't it? Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is the fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. 
Daniel 2, starting at verse 44. <clears throat> Daniel 2, 44. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. God's going to set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Never? Wow. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, in other words, God did it, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, these, those are all the previous kingdoms. The great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof. There's a man named Nebuchadnezzar who had a dream, and Daniel, with help from God, explained it. Things were going to change. But it's right here. The, the normal kingdoms will go away and God's kingdom will stand. <clears throat> Acts 1, verse 6. We already referred to verse 11, but let's read verses 6 and 7. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? That seems a legitimate, legitimate question. They knew he was the king. They knew things were going to change, that the kingdom was going to be on earth. And so they're asking, is it now? Verse 7, and he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. In other words, you don't know, and you know what? We know from other verses that at that point in time, at least, Jesus didn't know either. They aren't the same individual, God and Jesus. And so he just tells them, you, you, you don't know. You don't know the times or the seasons. Mark 13, 32. <clears throat> Mark 13, 32. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. So, yeah, it's not such a strange thing there in Acts. Verse 33, Take ye heed, watch, and pray, for ye know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. Oh, is that us? Work? Watch? Wow. We still don't know what time he's coming back, do we? Are we watching the signs of the times? Should we know? Verse 35, watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning. Lest suddenly, excuse me, I left out the most important word there, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Watch. What are we watching for? We're watching for the Lord to come back to set his, up his kingdom on the earth. Let's read Psalms 132, verses 13 and 14. <clears throat> Remember, we're trying to prove a positive here. We're not trying to prove a negative. Psalms 132, 13 and 14. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his dwelling place. This is my resting place forever. Here will I dwell, for I have desired it. We can keep on going there, isn't it? Couldn't we? But God has chosen Zion, a place right here on earth. And he's going to be here and dwell forever? Yeah. So that's the Old Testament. What's the New Testament say? Revelation 21, 1 through 5. Revelation 21, 1 through 5.
which says, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. We read this phraseology earlier. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. That's a hint how this earth can look. How much room would there be on this planet if there wasn't the oceans and the big seas? doesn't say there's no more lakes or rivers or water, just no more sea. Think of the square footage. How many people of all ages, I love this verse, how many people of all the ages are going to be saved? Well, I would say a lot need more square footage of space for them, is what I would say. <clears throat> then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God is going to be with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away every tear from their eyes. How many of us have had that problem? We don't need to go there, do we? For there shall be no more death. Wow. Nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain. For the former things have passed away. Like we were talking about, it, it's, it doesn't matter what you had problems with as a three-year-old or four-year-old, that was all part of God's plan. And once it's passed, it'll be glorious. It'll be glorious. Verse 5, Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. I hope all of us can't help but remember Lyle when we read this, because he always said, I don't make all new things. It's not a different earth. But I make all things new, renewed, like we read in Acts at the beginning, right? Restored, restitution. He makes all things new. And he said to me, write, for these words are true and faithful. So God's ultimate plan in all of this that we sometimes have trouble understanding and putting together is here on this earth that he created to be with his family that he created. Mark 16, verse 3. So what can we know? Mark 16, verse 3. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? Didn't we just read about watch? Thank you. I even have that written. I just have a trouble here. Uh, sorry. Matthew 16, 3. Thank you. <laughs> yes, please speak up. <clears throat> Matthew 16, 3. And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, can ye discern the face of the sky, but ye cannot discern the signs of the times? Yes, like we already read. We are to watch. So there is a certain amount of cognition that we should have about the signs of the times because the comparison here is they can look at the sky and tell the weather, and the warning is you should also be able to look at the signs of the times and realize whether the timing is getting close or not. Let's finish with Luke 12, 37. Luke 12, 37. <clears throat> Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself, and he shall make them to sit down with meat, and will come forth and serve them. Blessed are those that are watching. So not only do we have morals that we have to have to uphold, and love, as was referred to this morning, love all, love our brother, and love all people. But we also have to watch and do the best we can for all others.
Blessed are those servants. Okay, thank you. Let's have a song. We'll finish with a prayer. Our almighty God in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this time to gather together. Help us, Lord, to always look forward to your return, to the, your kingdom coming to this earth, to be in, in that kingdom. And Lord, please forgive us of our sins when we fail to love one another as we ought to, and when we fail to love you and the many blessings that you give us each and every day. Help us to realize that all good things come from you and that we are not our own saviors. We can do nothing of that, Lord. So we do need your help, and we pray for that help. And we thank you for all good things. In Jesus' holy and precious name we pray. Amen. <laughs>